Welcome to Charlotte Reader's Podcast, where authors give voice to their written words. I'm Landis Wade, host of the show, and as you can see, we're not in the podcast studio today. We're here at Park Road Books, sponsor of the show, and I'm here today with Paula Martinet, an author who appears in season one of the podcast. Paula, welcome. Thank you, Landis. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Now, you wrote uh, a book called The Eight of Decades, which you read from um, on the podcast, and it's about um, a lesbian librarian who is working in the Charlotte school system during the 50s, 60s, and 70s, mm -hmm. a time when it wasn't probably a good idea to be out. Mm -hmm. right? right, right. right. T tell us about the book. Yeah, it's, um, as you said, it's it's actually a novel in stories. Mm -hmm. There are 11 interconnected stories about this mm -hmm. character named Ada Shook, who, and it takes us uh, through her life from 1947 to the present. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the book got started for me um, because I like to take walks in my neighborhood of Noda, which used to be North Charlotte, mm -hmm. a little mill community. Mm -hmm. And I noticed a woman who wasn't as friendly as some of the other folks in the neighborhood. She was actually kind of nervous when I was walking by. And in, in my writer's mind, I just wondered what was going on with her, what would make someone mm -hmm. so guarded that she would run back into her house. And so this character, Ada Shook, just popped out at me, and, and I through sketching and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, got to know her better and, and mm -hmm. discovered that she was a librarian and that she had been around um, since the days of the early days of integration. Mm -hmm. And also that she was a lesbian and that was part of her, her fear and her intense mm -hmm. sense of privacy um, mm -hmm. that, as you point out, in the South, it wouldn't have been a safe time for her to be out. Right, and she's drawn to um, this character in the book whose name is Cam. Yes. And she starts to realize that she has feelings perhaps that might have dated back to feelings she had in college, but she didn't understand those feelings yes. at the time. And you've got a little, in the spirit of the podcast, you've got a little piece you're going to read from. Yeah, me. I'm okay. going to read from this, uh, a chapter called The the Book Club, where um, Cam has created a book club so that she can get to know uh, yeah. Ada better. So this takes place uh, during the book club. Uh, and Augie is a friend of theirs. She likes you so much, Augie continued after a pause. He didn't have to say her name. A ripple of excitement traveled up Ada's arms from her fingertips just the same. You're all she talks about these days. I haven't seen her so peppy since Viv. He dropped the name lightly like a handkerchief slipping out of his pocket. She made this little book club just for you. How else do you get a librarian to come over and meet your friends? She would have preferred a softball team, that's for sure. His words made her forget the name Viv. Ada could hear her heart pumping. It wasn't that she hadn't considered she might be different. But twice before, she had dismissed her crushes on women as something she'd outgrow in time. One was understandable, a schoolgirl infatuation with, with Miss Ruthie, the librarian, who treated her with respect and caring. The other was Natalie, and she was much harder to brush off. Do you ever wish, well, that we could be more to each other? Ada had ventured once with Nat, when they were flopped across Ada's dorm room bed after a perfectly lovely day of doing nothing but being together. She wasn't even sure what more would be, but at that moment she would have been willing to experiment. Ada's eyes tracked a crack in the ceiling as she waited for Nat's response. Whatever do you mean, Nat said, sitting up and smoothing her skirt. We're close as sisters. There's nothing more to be. Uneasiness sliced through Nat's voice, and it wasn't long after that she started seeing Hank in earnest. He'd been just a casual date up till then, but by the end of the term she was wearing his grandmother's diamond. Now when Ada got letters from Nat, she still felt a dull ache, like a tooth on the verge of going bad. It had been hard to hear that there was a baby on the way. Hank and I are over the moon, Nat wrote, to break, the, to break the news. My prayer is that you will know this same happiness soon, Ada dear. Had she found happiness, she wondered, and just didn't want to face it? The men she met with were dull or patronizing, while she wished her coffee conversations with Cam would never end. It was a feeling that seemed more pro profound than Nat's comment about Hank when she got engaged. He suits me, and he'll be a good provider. That's very nice. Now, you've got another work of LGBT fiction coming out uh, in May, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Called Cleo's Rising. Yeah, it's called Cleo mm -hmm. Rising. Um, it's the story. It takes place in 1983, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit later than, than mm -hmm. the Ada decades. And this, um, this character comes from Western North Carolina? Yes, yeah, she does. She, she comes from just outside of Asheville. Um, and in 1983, she decides that Asheville is too small a town for her and that she moves to New York City to um, pursue a career in publishing. And through a, a series of events, she becomes the, uh, the gal Friday to a, a writer of the lost generation, a woman who uh, accomplished one great book and then sort of became a recluse. 
And so it's, it's a story of their intergenerational relationship and how people lie to each other, keep secrets. Uh, once again, about yeah, secrecy. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Good luck with that. And yeah. You also read on the podcast uh, an essay you, you had published um, about sexual harassment. Um, yes. And um, it, it was an essay, so it had something to do with your own personal yes. life experience. Well, why did you decide to write that, and can you tell us about that? Yeah, it was um, it was published in Hippocampus uh, last summer, and uh, it's called uh, "Good to the Girls," and um, it, it's actually about something that happened to me in my first professional job when I was in my twenties, um, back in the nineteen eighties, and I had never written about it, but um, I always had it in mind, and um, at different times in over the course of the years, over the decades, I've been triggered by by something like uh, Anita Hill testifying mm -hmm. about Clarence Thomas. Mm -hmm. And then once again, when the Me Too movement um, really broke out and, and flourished. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this piece as kind of my my addition to the litany of, yeah. of women's voices about sexual harassment. Well, thanks for contributing to that, that conversation. You think times are changing? Uh, unfortunately, no, uh, not, okay. not so much, All yeah. Right. Hey, what do you think of the podcast? I love the podcast. I think mm -hmm. I think it's so great. I think it uh, helps to to contribute to the writers mm -hmm. community in in Charlotte, and we have so many different talented writers of many different voices mm -hmm. and stripes that it's it's just great to see everybody yeah. together in one place like that. Well, thanks for being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for today. Another fine author giving voice to her written words. Uh, if you'd like to see Paula's. Uh, entire uh, episode, actually you can't see it. If you'd like to hear her <laughs> entire episode, go to uh, charlottereaderspodcast.com or Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to get your podcasts. Um, until next episode, I'm Landis Wade for Charlotte Readers Podcast.